Once upon a time, there was a sweet little girl who was loved by everyone who looked at her, but most of all by her grandmother, who would do anything for her. Once, she gave her a little riding hood made of red velvet, which suited her so well that she would never wear anything else. So she was always called Little Red Riding Hood. One day, her mother said to her, Come, Little Red Riding Hood, here is a piece of cake and a bottle of milk. Take them to your grandmother. She's not well, and they will do her good. Set off before it gets hot, and walk nicely and quietly. Do not run off the path, or you may fall and break the bottle, and then your grandmother will get nothing. When you go into her room, don't forget to say, Good morning. First, Riding Hood walked straight along the bright forest path. But soon, near the river bank, she saw a beautiful field of wildflowers. They were growing everywhere under the tall green trees. She thought it would be great fun to pick a few flowers to surprise her grandmother. Then she remembered her mother had told her she must not leave the path. But the day was so beautiful. The forest so friendly, colorful, that she thought there could be no harm in disobeying her mother just this one time. The flowers smelled so sweet, sweeter than peppermint candy. Then Red Riding Hood heard a gruff voice say, Yes, they certainly are beautiful flowers. She turned and saw the big greedy wolf of the forest standing on top of a rock. Red Riding Hood had never seen a wolf before, so she was not afraid. She thought he was the biggest and most beautiful brown dog she'd ever seen. He appeared so friendly, too, when he spoke to her. She didn't know what a wicked animal a wolf could be. Mr. Wolf asked her what she was doing all alone in the forest. Red Riding Hood told him she was on her way to her grandmother's house with some fresh cookies and a bouquet of flowers. And where does your grandmother live, asked the wolf. She lives in a small yellow house with a red roof just over the hill. Well, said the wolf, good day to you, my little girl. And he disappeared into the bushes. Red Riding Hood was disappointed to see the wolf go. She wanted him to stay longer, but it was getting late, and it was best that she be on her way. Meanwhile, Mr. Wolf ran slyly through the wood, along the path and over the hill, until he reached Grandmother's house. When Red Riding Hood arrived at her grandmother's house, she knocked at the door, but there was no answer. She knocked again, and a strange, gruff voice said, 
Lift the latch and come in. It was strange, but the bright sunshine of the forest made grandmother's room appear very dark. It seemed so dark to Red Riding Hood that she could hardly see her grandmother in bed. Grandmother looked so different, and her voice sounded so deep and gruff. Perhaps Granny had been ill with no one to look after her. Oh, Grandmother, how you have changed. What long ears you have, said Little Red Riding Hood. All the better to hear you with, my dear, replied the wolf. Oh, but Grandmother, your nose. What a long nose you have. All the better to smell with, my dear, replied the wolf. Oh, Grandmother, what large eyes you have. All the better to see you with, my dear, said the wolf. And then Red Riding Hood saw clearly his long, sharp teeth. But, Granny, what great sharp teeth you have. All the better to eat you with, my dear. Grandmother was ever so grateful to see Red Riding Hood safe and sound. The brave huntsman was very proud of his trusty old gun. Grandmother and Red Riding Hood thanked him for killing the wolf and saving their lives. The hunter bade them farewell, proudly shouldered his gun, and marched back along the path to his home in the forest. Red Riding Hood was happy to know that the greedy wolf of the forest could never again frighten or harm her. So she started cheerfully for home to join her mother, where she lived happily ever after.